Hi everyone, it's Katrina. Number 10, Walnut Brains. The Ampelosaurus was a truly gigantic dinosaur, measuring in at a whopping 50 feet long. And yet despite being a titanic monster that could crush a car with one foot, its entire body was regulated by a brain roughly the size of a walnut. And this is only one example. Something surprising you might not know is that many prehistoric creatures had unflatteringly small brains. It all started in 1912, when Jenny Irene Mix described the Diplodocus as having a brain not much larger than a walnut. This soon became a kind of go-to unit of measurements. In 1945, famous paleontologist Edwin Colbert said the Stegosaurus, everyone's favorite armor-plated dinosaur, had a brain the size of a small edible seed. In other words, about the size of a walnut. When the 50-foot-long Ampelosaurus was described by paleontologist Ryan Ridgely, he said its brain was not much larger than a tennis ball. But that comparison turned out to be way too generous. A tennis ball has a volume of roughly 140 cc, but the brain endocast of an Ampelosaurus only had a volume of about 39.5 cc. So again, similar to a walnut. As you can tell, dinosaurs had seriously small brains. No matter how many species of sauropods are found, large dinosaurs like the Brontosaurus are included in the sauropod family, the brains just don't seem to get any bigger. Scientists aren't sure exactly why, but the bigger the dinosaur was, the smaller its brain seemed to be. Are you surprised by this? Let me know in the comments! Number 9. The Two-Legged Croc There was once a crocodile that could run on its hind legs like an angry ostrich. This shocking creature is called the Caprosuchus, and it was one of the most frightening things that ever walked the face of this planet. It lived in the late Cretaceous period, meaning between 95 and 100 million years ago. It would have resided in swampy, wet areas alongside many of the most famous dinosaurs. It most likely dined on many of your favorite dinosaurs. However, it was a biological crocodile. The Caprosuchus was a direct relative of modern crocs. The big difference was that it possessed an extraordinary sprinting ability and had teeth like tusks. The teeth of the Caprosuchus were longer than any other known crocodile. It had three pairs of teeth like walrus tusks, making it part wild boar. They were so long that they likely stuck outside of its mouth, stretching past its snout. There has only ever been a single skull found to prove the Caprosuchus existed. And yet from that single skull, researchers have learned a lot. Just from recreating its head, they were able to figure out what its legs were like. Scientists think its legs gave it the ability to walk on land, strutting about like a bird. Instead of running after its prey on four legs, it's believed it got up on its hind legs and sprinted at unimaginable speeds. This means that modern crocodiles at some point lost the ability to sprint. And now for number eight, but first, it's shout out time! I want to say a big thank you to Blessed Beauty and Isaac Brill for supporting this channel. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already for more videos about prehistoric creatures. Number 8. The Dino Dance Dinosaurs used to dance like their lives depended on it. For a very long time, paleontologists have studied dinosaurs and wondered what their mating rituals may have looked like. Since many dinosaurs were the original ancestors of modern birds, it seems fair to think they participated in similar rituals. And that means dancing. Just like how birds throw elaborate dance parties to impress potential mates, carnivorous theropods like the T-Rex may have used some sick dance moves as well. A group of paleontologists recently tried to get to the bottom of the mystery. They studied scrape marks left behind by prehistoric beasts in Colorado. The lead scientist on the project, Martin Lockley, says the markings are the first physical evidence of dinosaur foreplay. Martin went on to say dinosaurs had incredible vision, were feathery and colorful, and often had head crests. Even the T-Rex was a visual animal, understanding its environment through sight. In a chunk of sandstone about 100 million years old, scientists found markings left behind by a dinosaur dance. The irregular groupings are almost identical to what can be found etched in the dirt after a group of birds get together to compete for mates. When birds do this, they leave behind the same kinds of markings in the dirt from their quick-moving legs. 
The discovery suggests that dinosaurs, even the mighty Tyrannosaurus Rex, danced up a storm when it was time to find a partner. But what kind of dancing did they do? Martin believes the patterns to be most similar to those left by modern puffins and ostriches. As hard to imagine as it may be, dinosaurs were dancing geniuses. Number 7. The Monstrous Paraceratherium What you may not know is that about 33 million years ago, there was a giant beast called the Paraceratherium, a type of rhino without a horn and much larger than a giraffe. It weighed a shocking 17 tons and stood 16 feet at the shoulder. That makes the Paraceratherium one of the largest animals that ever lived. It resided across Western Europe and throughout Asia. It was a giant hornless rhino with a neck like a giraffe and a body like an elephant. This was by far one of the most unusual animals to ever exist. As an herbivore, the Paraceratherium spent most of its time eating vegetation. Because it was so big, it could graze the treetops that no other animals could reach. It even had a kind of trunk that it used to help scrape foliage from branches. That means the rhino was also equipped with an elephant's trunk, adding even more to its weirdness. And as if that weren't enough, these gentle giants were nocturnal. Because they were so massive, they likely had large ears to help dissipate their body heat. This is the same reason African elephants have such big ears, to help regulate their heat. Because grazing in the daytime would have surely killed them, the Paraceratherium only came out at night. Number 6. Venomous Saliva did you know there used to be giant lizards with venomous saliva? Australia in particular was home to some very scary reptiles, even scarier than the ones that live there now. During the Pleistocene era, starting about 50,000 years ago, there was a species of giant monitor lizard called the Megalania. It was the biggest lizard that existed, at least the biggest we know about. It grew anywhere between 11 and 23 feet and could have weighed up to 4,000 pounds. This wasn't a dinosaur, though. It was a lizard. Just imagine the scaly bearded dragon at your local pet store, except 4,000 pounds and bigger than a truck. Australia was overrun with these creepy reptiles. Scientists believe the Megalania is most closely related to the modern Komodo dragon. The Komodo dragon is known for killing its victims with venom secreted through saliva. And that's how the Megalania hunted as well. The first indigenous settlers of Australia may have even encountered these beasts before driving them off the edge of extinction. For the first people to arrive in Australia by boat, coming across a lizard the size of a dragon must have been horrifying. It's no wonder that the natives would have taken it upon themselves to hunt Megalania until they were all gone. Do you think you would be able to take on a Megalania? Let me know in the comments! Number 5. The Mystery of Prehistoric Plants Each night as the sun goes down, plants around the world fall asleep. Many species, some you may know like daisies, curl their leaves and petals and rest until the morning. It's a fascinating behavior that scientists recently tracked back to 250 million years ago. Researchers found bite marks left on fossilized plants by ancient insects. The unique bite marks show that insects were feasting strictly on folded leaves, meaning that they were hunting at night. This has led experts to think that the extinct group of plants curled up and went to sleep at sunset just like many modern plants do. The discovery was made with help from Stephen McLaughlin at the Swedish Museum of Natural History in Stockholm. He and his team looked at extremely ancient plants from the Paleozoic and Mesozoic eras. Many of these plants show that they were eaten by insects at night while curled up. But here's why that's so strange. Scientists have no idea why plants fold their leaves at night. It's something that's been talked about by naturalists since at least 324 BC. That was when Androsthenes of Thasos, a good friend of Alexander the Great, documented the phenomenon. Charles Darwin even talked about it in 1880 in his book The Power of Movement in Plants. But even though the phenomenon has been happening for 250 million years, scientists can't figure out what the point of curling up at night is. Maybe they're just like us. Maybe the plants just want to be cozy. Do you have any theories? Let me know in the comments. Number 4. Why No Dinosaurs, Washington? The Pacific Northwest is truly one of the most wild places in America. With its lush rainforests, rocky coastline, and verdant hills, it seems like the perfect place to find dinosaur bones. 
the Pacific Northwest, and specifically Washington State, should be rich in dinosaur bones, right? The shocking truth is that never in history have paleontologists ever found a complete set of dinosaur bones in Washington. The place in America that looks the most prehistoric doesn't even have any prehistoric dinosaurs to call its own. It wasn't until 2012 that a dinosaur femur was found on Susha Island, and even then, the dinosaur fossil was found in a rock that had been flung onto land by a rogue wave. It may not have even come from Washington. Other than that, the state is bare of dinosaurs. In 2019, a fourth grade class at an elementary school in Tacoma tried to get a state dinosaur going, but because there was only that single femur found on Susha Island, the Sushasaurus rex was the only dinosaur that could become a sort of mascot for the state. But there was a problem. Researchers with the Burke Museum said it was unclear if the dinosaur was even a unique species. Sushasaurus is only a placeholder name. Nothing about it is official. Dr. Katherine Anderson with the museum says the fossil was only deposited in Washington because of tectonic activity. The fossil in the rock migrated north and ended up on the island. It never lived in Washington. As far as experts are concerned, there still has never been a dinosaur found in Washington state. Number 3. Fingerfish you may be familiar with how life evolved from the ocean, with animals evolving limbs and crawling out from the seas to populate the land. What you might not know is that scientists recently discovered a fish from 380 million years ago that had fingers. Scientists believe the discovery of this skeleton could show exactly how animals moved from fins to fingers. A tetrapod is any animal with four limbs. And although humans have five digits radiating from our palms, other tetrapods use their limbs differently. For birds and bats, their hands are part of their wings. Their skeletal fingers with thin flesh stretched between them allow the animals to fly. From birds to elephants to humans, the basic structure is exactly the same. Charles Darwin talked about this in 1859 when discussing the origin of species. Bats, horses, Dolphins, moles, and people all have the same pattern of small bones in relatively the same positions. Darwin's theory was that we all evolved from a common ancestor, the first creature with digits. 160 years after Darwin, scientists may have found our ancestral fish. Its skeleton was discovered in Miguasha National Park in Quebec. It appears to be the first instance of a complete prehistoric fish with the presence of an arm, forearm, and carpal bones. Those are the bones in our wrists. It also had tiny bones that hadn't quite evolved into fingers yet. Number 2. Mammoth Poo There is one fact about the legendary woolly mammoth that you may have never heard before. It's not the most glorious of facts, but it is worth knowing. Maybe. Scientists recently inspected some preserved chunks of ancient mammoth refuse and discovered that the extinct creatures once ate their own waste for dinner. The team of scientists behind the discovery was led by Bas van Giel from the University of Amsterdam. They uncovered fungus spores inside an ancient piece of mammoth dung, spores which only grow on the outside of dung. What this means is that the mammoth must have eaten its own poo. It is the only scientific explanation. You may be thinking the discovery is just a fluke. Maybe there was one weird mammoth who had an unusual eating habit 12,000 years ago. But there was another similar discovery made in 2006. The discovery has now been made enough times that scientists are fairly certain this was a widely practiced habit. The why is what really has scientists scratching their heads. Nobody knows why woolly mammoths resorted to eating their own waste. Some specialists have suggested it may have been out of desperation. Mammoths may have been starving during particularly rough winters. This may have left them no choice but to eat their leftovers. Either that, or they were just trying to maintain a balanced diet by eating recycled grass. Number 1. Tiny Horses 55 million years ago, the temperature in North America changed significantly. Temperatures suddenly skyrocketed, and the entire North American continent became smoking hot. When that happened, the animals living there started to change. This was especially true for horses. As the temperatures rose, horses started to shrink. 
Prehistoric horses went from being about the size of a small dog to the size of a small house cat. Here's the secret truth about the evolution of the horse. In the beginning, horses were no bigger than your pet dog. They dwelled in the forests of Canada and the USA and looked fairly similar to the horses still alive now. The only difference was that they were really small. Then came the scorching heat. Horses shrank to become the size of house cats and then, shortly after, began to grow again. As horses grew in size, they also started to diversify. Around 12 million years ago, horses had become about the size they are today. And by 3.5 million years ago, horses had spread into other areas of the world. The temperature was dropping, things were getting colder, and horses moved from North America into Eurasia. That marked the beginnings of the modern horse, which is still alive today. The secret is that in the beginning, horses were tiny. They were so small that only a baby monkey could ride one. Would you like to have a tiny prehistoric horse as a pet? Let me know in the comments below and thanks for watching! Remember to hit that subscribe button and come back soon for more amazing videos on ancient history. Bye!